the best of best. And Father, today we stand here as friends, family, relatives, celebrating this wonderful occasion with him. And Father, we want to take everything that we do today and give you the glory and the honor. So Father, right now we comment everything that is to be said now. We pray, Father, that our joys may be your joys. Our celebration may be your celebration. And Father, whom can we give the praise and glory except you? So today, Lord, we pray that you will bless this function, even as we further tarry. I pray, Lord, that all we do and say may bring glory to your wonderful name. In Jesus' precious name. Well, ladies and gents, we definitely like to welcome you and tell you thanks for taking your time from your busy schedules to be in our midst this evening. To add to the glamour and the glitz of this auspicious and wonderful occasion. Life is an amazing paradox if you think about it. Man can build a machine to reach the moon, but he's so lazy to cross the street to say hello to a friend only. But I'm a nice guy, and so are your hosts. So we can allow you this opportunity to turn to the person next to you, to the side of you, to the back of you, and say hello to you. Just meet your neighbor. You can wish somebody happy new year. You see it for the first time. All right, ladies and gents, if you are not a direct family member of Belinda and Louis, just for responding to this invite and making this function and gracing this function, tonight you are part of their family. If you believe so, we'd like you to tap your hands to repeat the music. opportunity for me to introduce myself. My name is Regan G. The G stands for Gupta. <laughs> My name is Regan Gerard. I am the nephew of the one and only Mutu Murugan. All every child here knows it, I'm sure. <laughs> Him and I come from a family of musicians and entertainers, hardcore musicians and entertainers. Even when you come into our house, you enter our living room, you'll notice our sewing machine is a singer. <laughs> so, a little bit of my background, my family life, I just want to state for the record. I am happily married. My greatest strength in life is my wife. My greatest weakness is my neighbor's wife. <laughs> Not you, Adil, the other side. <laughs> my name is yeah. I have two sons, both are boys. Just checking your paying attention. My elder son is 10 years old, his name is Troy. He's very passionate about work. He said, Daddy, with all your contacts, please organize me a job. I organized him a job. He's now a lifesaver in the local car wash. <laughs> if ever you're looking to hire myself or my uncle and you're looking for us, we stay just south of Amshlanga. It's called Queensborough. And we just get into the main road, Fremantle Road. We don't give you a house number. You don't need a house number. You just look for the biggest double story face brick house. Waterfall shooting left and right. Two huge Dobermans guarding the house. Range Rover Park one side. C63 Mercedes Benz Park the other side. You ring the doorbell, the intercom, the witness, the lady I was talking about. She'll come out, she'll ask what you want. Tell them you came for Regan and Mutu from the outbuilding. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now that you know enough about me, let's get to know our audience. Is there any white people in the house? Anyone? Oh, I noticed my man. How are you doing, son? You're cool. Let this be a lesson to all other Indian people. Always invite white people to your functions. They're great for lighting. They just brighten up the place. Thank you, son. Okay. Are there any black people in the audience? And I'm not talking about Tamil people. I should be talking, huh? But let me tell you something what gets me through the day and the morning, especially, right? Being a dark skin, handsome Indian. And all the other fair guys are making fun of you. What you must do is do what I did. Every morning, I go shave to brush my teeth. I've got this big mirror. In the bottom of the mirror, I've got a picture of Logi Naido. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not way in front of Logi Naido? <laughs> Even the Nigerian was in the sea. Hey, that guy's black guy. <laughs> but Logi's my man. Okay, are there any Hindustani people in the house tonight? Indios make some noise. Yeah. Alright, what do you call a van full of Hindustani men? Back to the only Hindustani men in the back of a van. Bread van. Alright, let me tell you something. Bread people are thrifty, they can save money. 
You want to save money? Give your money to a brero. Whether you get it back or not, I don't know. <laughs> And let me tell you something. My neighbor, if I stand in front of my house, on the left hand side is a brero. Yeah, I mean, a brero can capitalize on his situation. He's fine doing it. His father died. So it's a big company to hand his papers. I need to place an ad in the paper, funeral notes. So we get there. He asked, he asked them how much to place an ad. My father died. They said, five grand a word. He said, okay, put Ramesh by that. <laughs> he said, no, sir, you have to put six words and above. Listen now. Talk, 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 talk. Have to put six words, have to put six words. He said, okay, put Ramesh by guy, pay your parole up for sale. Just think of this in any situation. Then even worse than that, Muslims can really say, are there any Muslims, any Islamos in the house tonight? I promise I'll cut my program short. <laughs> Same story on this side, right hand side, Islamo died. Same story, they come to tell you speakers, we get there, how much? Five grand a word. He said, too much. He said, you know what? Put Babu by that. He said, sorry, sir, it has to be six words and above. Yeah, well, some more capitalizing the situation. Talk, talk, talk. He said, okay, put Babu by that, but the tax shop is still open. <laughs> Let's capitalize. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with you, black, white, green, orange, you're welcome here tonight. Opening up the speeches this evening is a man that is coming up a very special song. I believe he's the one that makes it happen in the family. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Adrian Naidu. Thank you for the very good introduction. Now, I'm not the one making that, but I thought I'd just make the words and capitalize on it. Anyway, let me start off with a quotation. When Henry Ford decided to produce his famous V8 motor, he chose to put an engine with the entire eight cylinders cast in one drop. And he instructed his engineers to produce a design for the engine. The design was placed on paper. His engineers said it was impossible. Henry Ford said, nothing is impossible. It soon became a reality. The esteemed characteristics of perseverance, dedication, motivation, and an inspirational dreamer are some of the key qualities embedded in Louis. And the personality resembles this goal. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, I've been honored for the part of the family to get a great privilege this evening on this joyous occasion of Louis' 40th birthday to say a few words, and I hope not to be too long. When I was tasked by Belinda to say a, spe uh, say a, a speech, I gladly accepted, since Louis and I have a lifetime of memories together. However, when I actually put pen to paper, that's when it dawned on me, what do I say? Where do I start? Where is it going to end? But considering the wide range of audience that we have here this evening, don't worry, Louis, all the dodgy stuff will be kept behind. All the naughty stuff will be kept behind. We just have good, clean fun. As you know, Louis has a large network of friends, and the attendance this evening is a true testament based on the different caliber of people that are present this evening. In addition to that, as we all know, Louis has not forgotten his grassroots, his friends, his schoolmates, his former work colleagues, his friends, his neighbors, his family, and most importantly, of his recent his business associates as well. There's a saying that we take Louis out of Chatsworth, and we all know he'll be moving out of Chatsworth. But the big question is, can we take Chatsworth out of Louis? <laughs> when describing Louis' personality and his unique words that he come up with, what do we say? Simplistic, down to earth, perseverance, strong will, independent and a motivated individual that inspires others is both spiritual and a family orientated person. He professed that he has an excellent memory, he always says that he's got a memory of an elephant. And Melinda's not in the head, so that's quite good, isn't it? A successful businessman, and without the shadow of doubt, last but not least, metaphors. How can we forget? Louis is always on the phone, says, don't teach grandfathers how to make children. <laughs> Many of you know Louis is a man of few words, but public speaking. But on a one-to-one -one conversation, that brings out Louis' true personality. He's a well-balanced individual, and that would um, stressfully, or should I say successfully, juggles the challenges of a family life and a very stressful business. I'd like to share a few moments of memories that Louis and I shared together. 
And some of it will be funny, I hope you enjoyed it. But this is how it rolls. Firstly, Louis' uh, young, uh, younger days and his birthday, he always used to say, tomorrow's my birthday, what are you giving me? Yeah. And my brother was here, he always used to say, and the Krish, next week is my birthday. What are you giving me? And how can I forget next door neighbor, Ma and Nila? Ma, tomorrow is my birthday, what are you giving me? Ladies and gentlemen, no pressure. Louis will be making his visit to your table to probably what you brought for him. No pressure, no pressure. Moving on, Louis' dad, Uncle Billy, inspiration to him. Uncle Billy always ensured Louis had the very best when he was growing up. When I talk in the 1980s, when uh, Louis' dad, Uncle Billy, bought him a, a go-kart and he had to uh, paddle on it and go through 908 into our road where we stay, 907. And I'm talking in the 80s with not much traffic. That brought the tra everyone to a standstill. And you know, Chatsworth, somebody makes a speak at one end of the road, the other one knows it. Auntie, auntie, see that guy, like guy coming? There, he's cycling and coming. Cycling, what cycling? Paddling and coming, man. But the father behind him. So what a show off there. So anyway, but that's how it was with Louis Louis. Driving. We all know that Louis loves his cars. And he always drives fast. Every time he says, Louis, why are you driving fast? He says, no, don't worry. It's a heavy foot. But let me tell you something. Louis and I both started learning to drive from his dad. He's been the inspiration to teach us how to drive. And we started driving a three liter button V6. But everyone will know for a fact, the present day this evening, learning to juggle, learn how to drive, get the, into the vehicle, to learn to control it, press the clutch, and change the gear at the same time is not easy, especially when it's a powerful vehicle. Needless to mention, Louis and I, we loved it. The good, good part of it was as, as soon as we got into the car, Louis said, my father, I'm driving first. I said, no, said, no problem, Louis, you go. As soon as Louis made the first mistake, as Louis and I commonly refer to it, it was called a top spin from his father. <laughs> he said, you're silly, bibi bibi bibi. <laughs> And then after we went on, he said, don't worry, boy, you got two more tries. The second one was that, the famous German knock. We got the German knock. And the third time was my turn. I said, Louis, check how it's done. Put it into one, release the clutch, already hit the top spin. Louis reckon, now who's laughing? <laughs> so I said, Louis, don't worry. Anyway, we enjoyed our long trips. Park ready crowd here will know for a fact. Coming Uncle Billy, or Uncle Jingo, as you call. These were the unforgettable days. And always, is that the gents, drive carefully, but please keep on the right lane if you can handle the speed. If you cannot handle, feel sorry for those people, the Toyotas, get on to the left hand side. <laughs> There's no secret that Louis has a passion for cars, music, and a football club, Liverpool. No secret, his favorite team is Liverpool and he wants to visit them, once again. He loved his Fords, and I have to talk about the Fords. The first uh, car he had was a Ford Escort Mark I. And the first one on the very first day, Louis said, check my cab, I reckon boss, we move in. <laughs> Little did we know, the first day the wheel fell off. <laughs> I reckon, don't worry, Louis, you can get it. Pass, we got it under control. When we seen the second car, what, I said, what are we going to go for? He reckon Ford Escort Mark I. He reckon, don't worry, my brother Colin will sort everything out. <laughs> Colin from Syria is there, so Colin. What we did is we gave it to a common parameter before Colin could see it. And Louis reckon, you might check this thing. I said, what Louis? He reckon, this is going to be ice white, baby. I reckon, no problem. Went to fetch the car, common friend, sprayed with enamel paint. I reckon, Louis, go on, best of all, Louis. How are we going to get on with this? He reckon, don't worry. So the car was not ready. Being Louis and he says, don't worry, Bucky, I got this thing to impress now, I've got to move a special friend of ours. I said, okay, you go, boss, I'll park at home. He reckon, don't worry, we need five rand for petrol. I said, don't worry, we go for it. Those are the good old days. Now we cannot even think about five rand for petrol. Anyway, Louis took our special friend, make, trying to make an impression. Went over, the seat was not secure. So Louis said, don't worry, boss. I said, Louis, we'll solve it. He said, don't worry, I got it under control. I think he learned it from his favorite friend, Baya says, don't stress. So he said, Louis, I said, Adrian, don't worry, everything's under control. So Louis went to Chatswood Center, as coming out of Chatswood Center, coming to see Raj Bansi, he greets Raj Bansi, the car backfires. <laughs> so Louis, really, what happened, what happened here? Let's check what happened. You look on the left hand side, the person 
the seat was being put a crate in it. He put the crate, the person in the passenger seat is in the back seat. So no way they can what came. Don't know if it was a vibration from there or it was a backfire <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The passion for cars will come to news. The passion for cars always plays a pivotal role in the way Louis enjoys life. It's not because of the financial muscle that he has today that he tries to drive those luxury cars that he has. The guy has in excess of 30 vehicles and he still continues. And that ex excludes any of his business vehicles. I can. Do you reckon, boss, we went to the George today? I reckon, boss, would you join? You reckon what? Wellness Crocky Palladium. We're going to rock it today on the speaker. Eat the jam, jam. And don't worry, boss. Do we put his Paisley shirt? He came and see me. You reckon what? Can I want you to listen to? I reckon, no. You reckon, don't use Paisley? I'm using Paisley. I said, all right, don't worry. So I said, okay, fine. I use my shirt and my tie. You reckon, don't worry. I said, Louis, how are we going? You reckon what? Guy, XR2, let's move. He gets in highway. We said, all right, don't worry. Guys. First car going, second car going. Louis, second. Errands, don't worry, we're gonna go. We eat it in a palladium. So that's how we used to do it. It's just quite nice, eventful at that time, and I must add, it was safe. Not forgetting the very last time that Louis and I decided to eat the club hiking was when we waited. It was an hour, it was cold, and we said, That's enough. I don't think we're gonna make it. He said, Don't worry. And there comes the foul van. Now this morning, this evening, I've got my Paisley shirt, Louis has got his tie. He's got his roll bottoms. He reckoned, no, what are we moving? Fortunately, my brother-in-law was a night shift. We eat his pub and you the fire and spice gold, everything we want. I said, Louis, we can't. He reckoned, boss, he's already late. We've got to win this club. Because we got no money to enter. We have to meet with the rest of the crowd. And we got a double stamp. So we hit that. That was the last. Because I tried to hold my breath. I could not hold very long. And yes, Louis, uh, he's tired. What do you do? It's okay, it's okay. I said, breathe, Louis, breathe. <laughs> so we said, no, we want a uh, much more eventful hiking trip. As most of you guys know that Louis owns trucks. He has the trucks going up to Johannesburg, Durban on a daily basis. Louis and I decided to hike to Johannesburg. What did we do? We got the first lift with his dad. To Marin your job, Louis said don't, I said boss, Louis said don't worry, next stop is Marisburg, let's try for Marisburg, you know. Fortunately, we hit JP Town. That was our longest hike that we hit, and um, thank you for those good memories. That was wonderful. I always tell Louis when it comes to music, buddy, you've got an old soul. You love your music, and without a shadow of doubt, you have a wide selection of your music. And I trust you fully concur with me that Louis has a good selection of music. Do you agree? Yes. So Louis comes up and says, you know, my favorite uh, band is Bear Company. I said, no problem, Louis. He says, it's happening in your backyard. I said, my backyard? Boss, you know, there's nothing much in London, yeah? There's nothing, this yard is so small. He said, don't worry, it's happening in Brighton. He said, don't worry, we'll take a hike and buy I said, Louis, don't mess around. Where is London and where is Brighton? It's that just to bring in some logistics in here, it's basically Durban to Pachepston. So Louis said, don't worry, we're going to do it. He said, don't worry, I'm bringing my thick bra, smooth and thick bra. Look at Bayer's coming. Bayer is an operator, we will get everything sorted out. I said, don't worry, Louis, we sort it out. When you're arriving, you reckon, don't worry, I'll get Bayer to sort out the tickets. I said, okay, great stuff. So Louis arrives in the UK, February, very cold, minus two, three degrees. So you're like, hey, boss, you didn't tell me to bring long jobs and come here. I don't know. you need long jobs? So you're like, it's very, very cold here, man. We need the long jobs. I reckon, boss, take it easy. Don't worry. If we're going to Liverpool, everything will warm up. That that company will keep you going. Anyway, gents, ladies and gentlemen, we what we did is we went.